when I left my ex-husband, I started questioning my faith. I started questioning why I ended up in that relationship that left me so broken. And one of the answers I got was that because I was not obedient to God, because when I started reading the Bible, I realized that there are rules that he has put in place that actually protect us from getting into bad relationships. And even though we are, have a relationship with him and we get into a bad relationship, that it doesn't mean that it's foolproof, but I said, questioning my lifestyle at the time. So I, I had a good friend who was staying with me and she somehow convinced me to start going to church. And as I went, started going to church, I grew more in faith, started uh, seeing God in a different way. And I, I stopped going out, I started staying home with my kids more often, and I started healing genuinely because now I didn't have to be drinking or smoking or, you know, or just going out to get rid of the pain, but I started finding healing within. And it was in that process that I started going to church. And now in church, you know, it's, it's really, being a single mother is very confusing even in church. Because in church you find there are two groups, there's the married and the singles, and the teenagers and the kids at that time. I don't know, maybe now they've changed. So they had these groups after church where you either go to the marriage group or you go to the singles group or you go to the kids group. So every Sunday, I would just go home because I just felt I didn't belong anywhere. So, but one day I felt strongly, you need to start going to the singles group. You need to start dating again. You need to, because I didn't want to get married again. But I'm like, but why, what, what single man will want to marry us? <laughs> I'm, married, I, I'm, I'm a woman with kids, but, God kept putting it in me, like, it's not, I don't look at it like that. Just start going. So one day I got the courage and I went and I told my girls, I'm going to that group you guys to go to the Sunday school. So I started going to the singles group. I met very nice people there. And by this time I had actually filed for my divorce. So I, I, I felt more courageous, like, yeah, I'm, I'm single actually. So it was in these meetings that I actually met someone and Today, that's the same person who was able to teach me business and ended up being my husband. So for me, I feel like if I didn't follow my heart and actually was afraid to follow my heart, I think I would never have actually gotten married or would never have met someone, but I would have stayed single and, and just, you know, they are wondering where, you know, that confusion. So I used to be, uh, one of the most confused people that I've ever met because I used to walk around calling myself married single and thinking that that actually meant something. So I was married before and that relationship didn't work out because I had a dream of building my country's first agro-tourism retreat and that meant that I needed to move and live in the countryside. And my wife at the time who wanted to do different things um, and her family also had different ideas so they never really saw that as something that you know they would want us to be able to do and so it was a hard decision to choose to pursue that dream that passion that you know that aspiration of uh, building the country's first agro-tourism retreat that then led me to have to you know choose that dream and that passion rather than trying to become someone to make my ex-wife and her family happy. And during that period of time where uh, I chose that path, I started having a lot of success. And so I became the first young person to achieve something like that. Actually the first person to actually do that in my country, build a, 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 an agricultural activity on a farm, a, a tourism activity on a farm. And then later got involved in entrepreneurship and innovation, uh, co-founded the first social entrepreneurship movement in my country. Uh, we train young people in social entrepreneurship, help them start their businesses. And then later I got selected for uh, the President Obama's Young African Leadership Initiative. At that time, there were 50,000 people who applied for the program, 500 were selected, and I was amongst these 500 young people. And my dream was to go for this program, learn the knowledge, and then come back and grow my agro-tourism retreat. But when I was there, uh, God had other plans because I was a free thinker at the time. I was seeking for God and I was really ambitious and I was looking for what, what am I here to do in life? What do I want to achieve? And so during one of the talks where Michelle Obama said something very interesting, she said that 
A powerful man is not intimidated by a powerful woman. And that stuck with me because then I started thinking, I grew up with a very powerful mother who has led you know, many people and very inspirational. So I looked up to her as my role model. But then I realized that a lot of women were you know, not given the opportunity to express their full potential. And having been a father to three beautiful girls at the time, I wanted my daughters also to become great leaders in society. And so it, it rang a bell in me that in order for there to be more powerful women, more successful women, it had to come from the men. The men had to be the ones to give them the opportunity. The men had to be the ones to support them. And so I had that vision that day that I'd like to be someone before I die who impacts the lives of more than a billion people, mostly women, and allows leadership to flourish, contributes to the future of Africa, et cetera, et cetera. And so as I was pursuing this idea, I saw what was happening in Kenya, which was aligned with uh, this vision of you know, becoming a, a thought leader, a world class speaker, a, a great innovator. And Kenya had this great vision of becoming the hub of innovation in Africa. And it just rang with me. All these things I've been trying to do back home, uh, I haven't been able to do. This is the country where I can achieve it. And so I took a leap of faith. Uh, my marriage was already you know, broken. I, I wasn't spending time with my children. I was miserable. The world was seeing me as very successful, but I was miserable. I said, okay, this may be an opportunity to start over. And then I took a leap of faith and I came to Kenya. And so during that first year while I was in Kenya, I went through a lot of difficulties because uh, a lot of people were taking advantage of you know, this vulnerability of this man who came with so much potential, great trainer, great speaker, great coach but who's literally struggling to survive, struggling to find his way through. So people were taking advantage of me, people were exploiting me, people were making me work for them, you know, share my ideas, but they would never want to pay or they would never really want to allow me to advance. And so that first year uh, was extremely difficult and I did everything I could to find my way out, but I was just hitting a cr against the wall. I moved 10 times in 10 months, lived in someone's couch, someone's floor, you know, I was hosted by different people and then whenever something changes, I have to find another place to stay. While at home, I could have just gone back and things would have been much easier. But I had this vision that I wanted to be a part of this innovation ecosystem. I really wanted to be someone who is, is transforming the continent. And I didn't feel like I could do it from home. Like this was the place where I felt like I could do it. And so this continued until a particular time where I started to realize that a lot of the challenges that I was facing were self-inflicted. It was because of how I was behaving, the type of people I was hanging out with, the type of choices I was making. And so that led me to start now, you know, having these deeper questions as to why am I here? Am I here just to be a speaker? Am I here just to be a trainer? Am I here just to, you know, uh, try to make money, try to succeed? Why am I really here? And at the same time, I met this uh, very good friend who started inviting me to her church. And I was a free thinker at the time, before I was born a Muslim. And so I, I had the notion of what was Christianity, very, you know, Christ was very inspirational. I loved the Psalms of David, very motivational, but I didn't know anything about the religion. And I didn't even want to be a religious individual because uh, I felt like religious people were hypocrites, right? They're, they tell you one thing, then they do something else. Uh, they want everybody to be, everyone has to have an enemy. Right? Every religion has to have an enemy so that they can support why they're doing what they're doing. So it was really a conflict. But I liked going to her church and I really enjoyed it. And then they were inviting me also to come to, you know, the singles. Uh, and I was like, you know, am I going to get back with my ex-wife? You know, because we have our children together. You know, where am I? So I was literally in that space of confusion. But I, I, I went and every time I would go, I would you know, look at how a lot of these guys and ladies, they didn't really know what it, what it was to be in a real relationship. They were you know, find, looking for the husband, the perfect husband, the perfect wife. And, you know, and I, I looked at them as you know, like they haven't gone through the things that I've gone through. They haven't seen some of these things. So it was really an opportunity to share my own experience and then looking for also like what I can learn. So it's doing one of those events that I actually ended up meeting uh, my wife and uh, she was there. Uh, it was an event where you know, we were all invited and I came. And uh, when I first met her, I, met, I saw she had children. I was like, oh, okay, me, I already have three of my own. Like, I gotta handle those ones first. But uh, we had a second meeting uh, 
uh, and that day she was just so beautiful. Like she, she, when I saw her, just like I said, today I have to tell this lady that she's beautiful. And I went and I told her she was beautiful. We ended up going out on you know, an impromptu date that day. And uh, we got to know each other. And she, she really saw what type of confusion I was in. And I really appreciated her honesty because she told me, she was like, you need to really be clear about who you are and what you're going through. And above all, you need God. And at that time, we were just friends, you know, and she saw the situation I was in, how, you know, people were taking advantage of me, and, 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 and the reason that I could have just gone home. It was much easier. I could go home. I, I had, like, a platform of success that I could ride on. So why was I, you know, just, you know, keeping myself here it didn't make sense to her as well. But the thing I really appreciated was that uh, she really believed in me. She believed in the potential I had. She believed in, you know, the work I was doing. She believed in my vision. And she was praying for her husband as I was praying for stability. And so we started praying together and our friendship grew. We used to call each other every day, pray together. Uh, I got to meet her children. We had, I had my first family meal in a long time and, and I really enjoyed it. And we started fellowshipping together. And through those fellowships, uh, I got to know Christ and I gave my life to, 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 to Jesus. And it really made me realize that a lot of things I was struggling from was really lack of God in my life. Like that anchor of God really in my life was what I was lacking. So uh, when it came to now her business, um, I saw that she had a great product. She told me it was unique and I didn't believe it at first. I was like, come on, seriously. Everybody says they have a unique product. And I had trained and coached so many innovators in Kenya. I had trained in all the innovation hubs. I had met almost all the great entrepreneurs uh, in the innovation ecosystem. I, I was really already active. I was you know, very well known. I had spoken in all the platforms, all the hubs. So I knew that Kenyans were innovative, but I was like, seriously, you're the only movable wooden tent, the first? So I went online, started, and I couldn't find anything. Like, anywhere where I will find movable pergola, it was her. And it just was like, okay, maybe she is telling the truth. But um, the problem was she was running the business like, like a hobby. You know, she enjoyed the designs, but she didn't have a real cu clear customer segment in mind. She didn't have a proper business model. Her marketing strategy was not in place. Her, she didn't have a constant team. You know, there were people coming and going. So all that made me realize that, you know, she needs help. But because we weren't in a relationship, all I could do was advise because I was also trying to figure myself out. But from the moment when we really saw that, you know, we had in each other what we all needed, you know, a, a, a friend, a partner with whom you can walk towards God, someone with whom you can raise your children. I could see her as the mother to my children. She could see me as the father to her children. That's when we decided now to go in front of God and say, we'd like to spend the rest of our lives together. And God made that happen. And from there, we then now, you know, decided to say, hey, now how do we, what do we want to do with our lives?